Father, we come humbly before you at this moment. And we ask that as, as we hear from you today, Lord, that you would, you would soften our hearts to what needs to be softened. And Lord, that we would draw closer to you because of who you are and the truth of those facts. So Lord, today may we hear from you in a, in a common story that most have heard. Lord, may we hear from you in a way like we've never heard from you before. Lord, may we be sensitive to what you have to tell us. Lord, fill this place. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you hear the kids singing? It's awesome. It's awesome. So, if you got your Bible, you can flip to uh, Luke chapter 17. Um, man, with Thanksgiving coming up and everybody going around, there was a... There was a young preacher uh, that had that had moved in, and uh, and and everybody felt felt sorry for the old preacher, and the old preacher didn't have anywhere to go to Thanksgiving because nobody he wasn't the preacher anymore, and some family had invited him over, and so uh, he goes to the door and he knocks on the door, and a little boy from the family runs and lets him in, and and as he's sitting there visiting, the the family says we're finishing final preparations, and uh, we'll we'll be out in just a second, and so. The, the, old, the old preacher's visiting with the young boy, and he says, man, are you excited about Thanksgiving? The boy says, yeah. He says, you know, I'm excited about Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. I love eating turkey and, and, and uh, dressing and all that other stuff. And the boy looks at him and says, I don't think that's what we're having today. He says, well, what do you mean that's, that's not what we're having today? He goes, everybody has turkey and dressing Thanksgiving. He goes, well, I don't think that's what we're having today. And the, and the preacher says, well, what are we having today? What do you think we're having today? And the little boy says, well, we're having old goat. I heard mom tell dad we're having the old goat over for dinner. And so, <laughs> since nobody else would have the old goat, we're going to have old goat for dinner. So, that's lame. I've used it like 18 times. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Today, as we uh, turn to Luke chapter 17 and, and uh, read a story that is not an uncommon story, if you've been in church, uh, it's been used at uh, church camps, vacation Bible schools, and all sorts of lessons, and uh, been preached uh, th hundreds of thousands of times. And uh, but today we want to look at it, and I want to I want to talk to you about what it really means and what it looks like. And as we as we see in this chapter today, we'll see Jesus perform a miracle. And uh, as he's traveling along the way, he's traveling uh, around around Judea and and, and going from uh, city to city here. And uh, and and this is the fourth of five miracles that Jesus will have performed in this time frame and in this area. And so as we think about the miracles Jesus has performed beforehand, He's, uh, he's, he's healed uh, the first two times He healed individual people, and then the third time He healed two people at one time, and then the fifth time He'll heal uh, two more in that. And so what happens here is, is uh, a miracle upon miracles. It is, it is above and beyond what we would normally know and see. Uh, what Jesus is doing throughout uh, throughout his ministry as he's teaching and preaching and and per performing these miracles and so uh, just so you're kind of caught up on where we're at that that's where we're at Jesus has been traveling from place to place going from here to there and and in his travels uh, being who Jesus is and only who Jesus can be and so let's uh, let's catch up I'll read to you all the verses of uh, ch chapter 17 verse 11 through 19 and then we'll go back through and we'll break it down so Luke chapter 17 verse 11 says, While he was on the way to Jerusalem, that is Jesus, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, ten leprous men who stood at a distance met him. And they raised their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. As they, and as they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back and glorifying God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered and said, Were not ten cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Was no one found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well." And so what we see here are ten men who are outcasts because of a disease called leprosy. And, 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 the, and where we derive our, our term leprosy uh, in, 
in the original Greek, it, it, leprosy really just means you're sick. And so there's, there's all sorts of varying parts of this where, where at some point, some were sicker than others, right? Women, you know how it is between a woman and a man. I think I saw a deal the other day, a picture that said a woman has a cold and she does this, this, and this, and a man has a cold and he dies for a week, right? And y'all, y'all know we all, take, we all take sicknesses differently and we all have different forms of sicknesses. There's a cold and then there's the flu and then there's, there's the stomach bug that comes with all of that and then that's just nasty. And then there's, uh, and then there's, then there's uh, what, what else is there? I, I had all this worked out and I thought about the nastiness of the flu and I lost my train of thought. Whoa, that stomach bug is not nice. And so, so, so then you go into uh, different diseases and so leprosy really just meant you were sick but there was a form of leprosy where we get our word bacteria from in the Greek. And, and it's basically bacteria, and, and that's where bacteria comes from in the original language. And, and, and this meant you really had the disease of leprosy. This bacteria would overtake your body. And so, so to kind of put it on a scale to where you understand the severity of the disease these, these ten men had, they weren't just sick. They, they didn't just have an unknown, you know, a common cold. They weren't just ten men being men, whining and crying. They were ten men who were, who were diseased and sick. They had actual leprosy. What we know today is leprosy. And what leprosy does is, is your, your body begins to desensitize itself. And so you can no longer feel your own flesh. And so you no longer can feel your own flesh and then it begins to attack its own self. And, and your body begins to, uh, the, the, big, the biggest form of outward, once you lost feeling in all of your limbs, uh, your, the biggest form of outward uh, attacking would be your skin would become thick and callous and it would start with a, with a patch on your head and you would begin to, begin to have these open wounds. And, and your skin would be thick and scaly and you would have these open wounds and, and it would just begin to eat itself. Sounds fun, huh? It just kind of makes me, yeah. I mean, some of you are going, ugh, and I'm, I'm with you. But that, that is truly what it was, and so it was extremely contagious. And so once you got leprosy, not only was your disease, just, just, just your life in and of itself was miserable. Uh, when it attacked itself, your bone marrow would dissipate, and your, your own limbs, your, your bones would shrink and come in, and, and your body would overtake your, your, your fingers and your toes, and it's just, it's weird. It's weird when you look it up, and, and, it's, just, and it's nasty. And nobody wanted it, and because of its, because of its uh, availability to be so contagious, man, people that had leprosy not only had to deal with the physical side, they had to be outcast. Not because they wanted to and not because their family didn't want to see them anymore, but because we couldn't run the risk of everybody in the family catching the disease, right? And that is, that is what leprosy looked like. And so that's what we kind of have here, and that's what is going on. So we see Jesus enter the picture in verse 11, and he's on his way to Jerusalem. He was passing between Samaria and Galilee. And so Jesus is making a, a normal trip, not, um, not uncommon. This was a, the same kind of trek where Jesus, when he went back to heal Lazarus and bring Lazarus back from the dead, same type of journey, same, same, almost the same footprints as where Jesus is walking today. And so verse 12, he says, as he entered a village... Ten leprous men who stood at a distance. And so now we see the life of a leper. The life of a leper, you are an outcast. And misery loves company. And so you gather with who? The other outcast. And so you gather up with the other outcast who can't be around anybody else but sick people. And so they, they gather up. All of these sick people are gathered up outside the city gates, cautious to stay at a distance because the law commanded them to stay at a distance, right? The law said you must stay at a distance. And so this leprosy, this disease that they have, has kept them away. Not only is their physical body just, just drained, they can't feel their limbs, their skin's falling off, they're, it's just this amazing form of pain. Now they've been outcast and pushed away from their family. They don't get to see their kids. They don't get to help raise. They don't get to hug their wife. They don't get to hug their children. They don't, they don't get to spend any time with anybody else other than the sick lepers. And so if you were that sick and you had heard about this Jesus who has been performing miracles, giving sight to the blind, healing lame men and getting them to walk, and you see him go by at a distance... Even if you don't believe, you're going to try because why? You're out of options. 
You're out of options. These men were out of options. They had nowhere else to turn. And how many of us have seen or been part of an instance where, no, we saw somebody who cried out to God who didn't really believe in him. They just knew there was no other way for help. They had tried every other option and got no response. And now, all of a sudden, here is God. I'll give him a try. Nothing else is working. Right? And so these leprous men are out of options. And listen to what happens. As they saw him pass by, they raised their voices saying, everybody in here has been sick at some point, and when you're sick, you can't talk, right? You're like, oh, you're talking like this. You're like, hey, hey. And then my wife pretends like she can't hear me. (laughs) I can't talk very loud. She doesn't want to help, and she pretends like she can't hear me. And so so I get no help. And so i I got to whine more. Then I'll be like, hey, I'm dying. I'm dying. I need water. And so, and so when you're sick, you have this, this parched in your throat. And so it, it hurts to yell, right? Anybody ever had that, that sore throat where it just it takes all that you have? But in the bottom of the barrel, when there's nowhere else to turn, you're willing to make your throat hurt to reach out to something that may help you, right? Do we all agree that these leprous men needed some Jesus? They needed some help. And so because they saw him at a distance, they were willing to go through the pain and shout. And they shouted. They said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And so as they they shout out to Jesus in the best voice that they can, as loud as they can because they can't get too close, but they want him to hear him. And they said, Jesus, Master, and that word master is a word, that carry, a word that carries some weight. When Luke uses it, it is, it is like commander in chief. When, when, when they cried out master, they were crying out for somebody that had some authority. Right? Right at a, at a sporting event, in the, in the last moment of the game, you're not screaming the name of a nobody. They're not shouting, throw the ball. To anybody but like LeBron or Michael Jordan or whoever. Give him the ball, right? They're not shouting, give Henderson the ball. They never shouted that when I was growing up. (laughs) Put Henderson in. Yeah, you got this. They never yelled that for me growing up. Because my name carried no weight. I was no good. I was white and short and skinny, (laughs) right? I had no ups to play basketball. And so they didn't shout my name with authority. But Jesus has authority, and they shout his name with authority. They say, Jesus, Master. And what do they say? Do they say, we're sick, we need healed? What do they cry out for? Mercy. They said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And how many times do we, in our own sickness, in our own depravity, with sin cast over our life, we turn to Jesus and we go, have mercy on us. Because we know mercy is all that we need. We know we need His mercy. And that's what these ten men knew. They knew they needed that. And so verse 14 says, when he saw them, he was like, huh, somebody said my name. That's not what he did. I was just joking. (laughs) And when he saw them, he said to them, what did Jesus say? He said, go and show yourselves to the priest." I don't know about you, but when I go to Jesus for some healing, and I know the power that he has, I want him to touch me. I want thunder to fire down from heaven. I want something cool to happen so I can be healed. I want God to show up with an audible voice and go, boom, you're healed, son. (laughs) Right? That's how we expect God to work, because he's God. And we expect that if God's going to work in our life, we should be able to see it because he's so powerful. And what God does here is he proves to to everyone around that I don't have to do any of that. I am God and I am in control of all and I will do however I want, whenever I want. And if I want to heal you, all I have to do is say the word. He didn't even say be healed. Can you imagine crying out to Jesus who's been healing all these people? You called him master because that's what you're supposed to you said all the right words, have mercy on us. And he says, go and show yourself to the priest. That sounds like an odd request, but the, the second part of that is, a priest is the only man who can ma- name you well. Once you've, 
once you've been uh, contracted the disease of leprosy and the city knows, the priest would actually diagnose how sick you were. They would, they would take and they would make you go and, and you would, they would diagnose the problem. They would go, okay, you got a cold, suck it up, right? No, they would diagnose how sick you were and they were like, eh, that's leprosy, you go out there. Shoo, shoo. And that's what the priest would do. But then when you were well, you would come back to the priest and the priest would be the one that said, you're well. And so Jesus sends them to the priest so they can be pronounced well, right? Now, it's an odd request. He never told them, you will be healed. He just said, go and show yourself to the priest. And so it takes a little faith, right? It takes a little faith to turn around and walk. And can you imagine the ten kind of looking like, I don't know, are you going to go? I'm gonna, I don't, are you going to go? I don't, I've been standing here for years. I'm going to go. You know, we're, can you imagine what the, the discussion that's going on? How are you going to? And so the Bible doesn't tell us what really happened there. All we know is they turned and they left. And all ten men left, and because of the faith that they had, that Jesus had the power, that he was master, because of that faith, they turned and they left. And as they turned and they left, they looked down and they go, whoa. I don't know if I was healed first or you were healed first or how the healing went, but, but they began to look around and go, whoa, you, you have toes again. You, mm, you're not as ugly as I thought. Wow. Wow, I am so glad I don't have to look at that wound anymore. And they realize that they're healed. And so in their healing, they've had this recognition, and they go and they, they do, and it says, as they were going, they were cleansed. So they've been healed, made whole. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, and he gave thanks to him. And it was a Samaritan. So ten men walking along the path, all with the same sickness, all with the same disease. And as they walked along the path, they are made well. One man looks down, and it is too much for him to contain the joy. The joy that he had been giving the joy that, that he had been given, that he had uh, totally been robbed from. He wasn't able to live or do like he had wanted to. Wasn't able to have the life that he had thought. And because of that, he turns around and he runs back to Jesus. And you remember the scratchy throat that he had? It's no longer scratchy. And so guess what he can do now? He can sing praises. He can fall on his face and he can shout, Glory to God in the highest. It says he began with a loud voice glorifying God. And too many times I feel like we kind of fall into the realms where we cry out to God and we cry out to God in our problems and we, and we just kind of lowly sing praise to Him. We use our loud voice on the front end and our quiet voice on the back end and we have so much to be thankful for. We should be screaming glory and honor and praise to God. We should use our voice in a loud voice. We shouldn't be ashamed to glorify God. And too many times we get caught up crying out instead of crying in praise and singing in praise with a loud voice. So Jesus looks down, and this man was a Samaritan, the one that he wasn't a Jew. He wasn't one of Jesus' people. And so, so for him to have turned around and fallen at Jesus' feet, it was the least likely candidate to have fallen. But he, he was so grateful for what God had given him. And Jesus says, were there not ten cleansed? But the other nine, where are they? Was no one found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And so Jesus says, Ten men, exact same disease. Ten men turned around and walked away and were all healed at the exact same time. Only one of them responded with thankfulness. Now the other nine, they went to the priest and did, because did, did Jesus say, turn around and thank me? I mean, he didn't tell them to. They went, they showed themselves to the priest, they were pronounced clean, and they went home to their families. And they were excited about that, right? Right? We like, to, we like to think, oh, we would never do that. I would always praise Jesus. But, but those men saw themselves clean and saw themselves let loose of the chains that had bound them, and they ran to the priest. The priest 
pronounce them well so they could go and be with their family. That's what they went and did. Doesn't mean they were 100% wrong, but when God had done so much for you, we should turn around and give thanks, right? And that's what the Samaritan did. He turned around, he fell on his face, he cried out to God. And because of his willingness to be thankful to God for what God had done in his life, he's going to receive something the other nine did not. Because you know it and I know it, that even those who don't believe in Jesus will cry out to him at some point in their life. They cry out when they have nowhere else to turn. And most of them, when they cry out and don't get the answer they want, they say, see, God, you're not real. And that's not how God operates. That's not how he works. And because of his willingness to turn around and praise God for what he had done in his life, we see this one man, this Samaritan, Jesus says, stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. Nine men Ten men received physical healing. One man received spiritual healing. One man received a gift greater than being healed of leprosy. Because he had a disease beyond what he could repair. There was no cure for leprosy. There was no cure for, for that disease in that day. And that is why you were an outcast and you only stayed an outcast till the day you died. And we all struggle with the same thing, the disease of sin that we allow to enter our life will take over us and sin has separated us from God. And apart from Him, we are like the lepers. We run to things we know we're not supposed to run to. We hang out with other people who, who enjoy the same disease we enjoy. We go places we're not supposed to go, do things we're not supposed to do because of the disease that is within us that, that is known to the world as sin. We are separated from God. And for those of you in this room who have cried out to God and said, Master, have mercy on me and felt His grace and His presence, you cannot help but fall on your face and give thanks to Him. Would Jesus have spiritually healed all ten men if they had come back? You darn right he would have. How we respond to God's goodness is on us. The fact that he blesses us with the life that he's blessed us with, we, well, we can't control that. But how we respond is on us. And so as we get ready to move into Thanksgiving, as we get ready to to look at our lives and, and, and be grateful for all that God has blessed us with. Is there ever a season a believer should not have reason to praise? Man, God has had mercy on us. He saved us from the greatest sickness that ever existed. He set us apart from our sin and He gave us a way through Jesus Christ. And we should forever be grateful. We should be ashamed of ourselves for crying out to God and quietly praising Him. And if we didn't quietly praise Him and we praised God with the same voice that we cried out to God with, how many other people would know of our faith and see what God has done in our life? God gives us mercy every day. I am a man, I mess up, and God gives me mercy every day. And for every day, I should be grateful for it. I should cry out to God and say, praise you, Lord. You love me enough that in spite of my faults, in spite of my failures, you love me. Amen. Humble myself before him and bow down and say, God, you are good. And I don't. I don't. We, 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 we give thanks to God at a meal on occasion. We give thanks to God when we remember when we go to bed. We give thanks to God quietly when He intervenes in our life and, and, and we, 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 we have a fender bender and it wasn't as bad as it could have been. But through all aspects of our lives, we should sing praise to Him. I want to close with a psalm. And at any point in our life, we should be able to run to this place. Psalm 103 says, 
I wish I could sing. I would sing it for you. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your disease, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. The Lord performs righteous deeds and judges and judgments for all who are oppressed. He made known His ways to Moses. He acts to the sons of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He will not always <clears throat> strive Sorry, he will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us, just as a father has compassion on his children so the lord has compassion on those who fear him for he himself knows our frame he is mindful that we are but dust as for man his days are like grass as a flower of the field so he flourishes when the wind has passed over it no and is no more and its place acknowledges no longer but the loving kindness of the lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear Him and His righteousness to His children's children, to those who keep His covenant and remember His precepts and to do them. The Lord has established His throne in heaven and His sovereignty rules over all. Bless the Lord, you His angels, mighty in strength, who perform His word, obeying the voice of His word. Bless the Lord with all His host, you who serve Him doing His will. Bless the Lord all your works of His. In all places of His dominion, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. We have an opportunity to sing that every day. And if you don't feel like that, you've never experienced the grace and the love of Jesus Christ. Because I know who I am, and I know where I fail. And it is His mercy, because He is my Master, that saves me from that pit. And He did the very same for you. Let's pray. Father, bless you. Bless you, O Lord, for all your loving kindness. May we scream it from the rooftops, the grace and the mercy that you freely give so that all the world will see Lord, if there's anybody here today who doesn't know you, I pray that you would draw them unto you, that they would not run away. They would not cry out and, and, and never turn back to see who you are. Just like Lori said, if there's a gap between us and you, all we have to do is turn around and you run to fill the gap. And if that is you today, I want you to know that God's grace is enough and you, you like the... The, the leprous man who had been healed and ran to Jesus and fell on his face, he, he didn't know theologically everything he should probably know about Jesus. All he knew was he needed him and he was grateful Jesus came into his life. And if that's you, all you have to do is cry out to God. You just tell God. You say, God, I don't, I don't have all the answers, but I know I need you. I don't want to do it on my own anymore. I want to turn from doing it my way and I want to follow you, Lord. I believe Jesus Christ saved me. And if you're willing to do that, God knows your heart. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that He is Lord, you shall be saved. Don't run away from God when you look back and see all the good that He's done for you. Lord, for the rest of us that know you, Father, we fail and we fail miserably at giving you thanks for all that you have blessed us with. But Lord, we just ask that 
that as we go about our week and this Thanksgiving week and we, we look at this time we get to spend with our family and this time we get to spend with our friends, Lord, that, that we would see you in and through all of it. Lord, that we would be so grateful for all that you have blessed us with, for all that you have given us in your grace and your mercy and the lives we get to live. And so, Lord, we just ask, we just ask that you forgive us when we fail you. And, Father, that your mercy is new every day. That's all in Jesus' name. Amen.